Today, I will be going over how Moses' shield works in Borderlands 3 and what are some of the best shields for a Shield of Retribution build. Um, so there's a lot of misinformation going around right now um, on what gear is good on Moe's um, since the game is relatively new, and so today I'll try clearing up some of the confusion. If you are pressed for time, I understand, and I'll just tell you up front, um, the front loader shield, the stop cap shield, the recharger shield, and the tenacious defense capstone skill are all worthless on shield or retribution builds, and uh, the must-haves are the deathless relic and the blood letter uh, com. So, if you're staying, I'll first go over how Moses' shield is calculated. So I did a lot of testing, this took me a few hours. Um, so I have come up with this and I made it nice and pretty. So your shield capacity is equal to the product of the additive bonuses and the sum of the base capacity and the thin red line bonus plus the front loader bonus. Um, so your additive bonuses is your base, which is one, right? Plus 6% uh, for each stack of, or not stack, for each point in Vladoff Ingenuity, plus 3% um, per um, point of Phalanx Doctrine times the number of stacks, right? So if you have um, nine, 9 out of 5 Phalanx Doctrine, you'll get 27% bonus shield for each stack, um, plus your Guardian rank, which is up to 15%. And then your shield bonus, so like if you have a plus 10% shield like on some other piece of gear, it will give you plus 0.1 here. And then the Deathless Relic, if you have the Deathless Relic equipped, that's a flat plus 100, so it's another plus 1. Um, and then the Thin Red Line bonus. So Thin Red Line is actually 20% of your max HP times all the modifiers on it. So increasing your Guardian rank, uh, the max HP stat, and increasing like HP bonuses. So like if I had a shield with plus 10 HP, um, it also gives me uh, plus 10% on my thin red line bonuses. So thin red line is definitely a good skill. And then um, at the very end is the front loader bonus, which does not get applied by the additive bonuses. So that's just 60% of your max HP. Um, same thing as, um, as the... Uh, the thin red line bonus. Now, um, let's see. I have notes down below just to clarify things. I think I went over everything, but um, yeah, you just gotta you just gotta plug and chug in this formula. I did make a spreadsheet. If you guys want to see the uh, spreadsheet with the proof, um, I'll gladly link it below. Also, I have a formula like uh, Excel formula in there if you want. Uh, but I'll have to figure out how to share um, an editable spreadsheet. So as you can see by this formula, the additive bonuses are super duper important as Vladoff Ingenuity, um, Phalanx Doctrine, and the Deathless Relic all apply to your base capacity and the Thin Red Line bonus. So um, basically, like the Deathless Relic is super, super good if you're running four out of three on Thin Red Line. Um, but you can also see that um, health is also useful since if you have 15 um, in guardian rank bonus You also get 15% more uh, thin red line bonus So and that compounds with deathless that compounds with failing doctrine and that also compounds with flat off ingenuity so definitely Maxing out both your shield capacity and your max health in your guardian rank is a good idea um, so this leads us into what items are bad. As you can see here, the front loader does not benefit from Phalanx Doctrine, it doesn't benefit from Vladoff Ingenuity, um, or the Deathless Relic. So really what you're seeing is at level 50, it's about a plus 3.5 um, thousand shield capacity, which in all terms of things isn't that much because you're starting out with um, 40,000, Usually, like, you'll have around 40,000 if you're running all the items. And then as you accrue Phalanx Doctrine stacks, you'll usually average around 60k. And sometimes on the high end, if there's high enemy density, you'll end up at around 100k um, shield. So people always talk about the front loader being so great. But in all actuality, it's actually not that good. Since its bonus is actually just plus a flat... 3.5k capacity, which is nothing when you hit 100k. Um, 
So it's actually pretty trash. Um, another shield that's also super trash that people like is the stop cap because the shot stop cap gives you five seconds of invulnerability when your shield breaks. It's similar to those uh, relics that give you five seconds of invulnerability when your health gets down to half. Um, now this works great for demolition woman builds and whatnot. Um, so I'll just show a clip of it working here. And as you can see, it saves you. But now if you only have one HP, you can see that, um, that it actually deals more than one HP of damage because there's that chip damage that when your shield breaks, it deals uh, damage to your health. So it won't trigger the stop cap and vulnerability and you'll just die because <laughs> you don't have enough buffer. Now, if you maybe had 10% health, you could live. Um, so the same thing applies to the charger, which is actually a super amazing shield since it gives you 100% of your shields back on break. However, the same problem applies and if you only have one HP, you will die before the shield can recharge again since the chip damage will once again kill you. Now, this also applies to the Tenacious Defense Capstone, which I believe is just a worse version of a Recharger Shield, since the Tenacious Defense only gives you 40% of your shield back, while the Recharger gives you all of it back. And um, <clears throat> the Tenacious Defense, it, it will not save you if you only have one HP. So all these things, like these, uh, I think four things, they're like really recommended by people for uh, shield retribution builds, but they're really not good. They're they're more suited for demolition woman builds, or if you're really daring, if you're running bottomless mags. But no one runs bottomless mags because there's no no increase to damage or healing there. So things that you should look out for, which are super good. Um, so the deathless relic, as I stated before, this relic is super important for the build as you get that crispy plus 100 to your additive bonuses, which applies to both your base capacity and your thin red line. Um, now, if you don't have the deathless relic, like you're seeing like about half as much shield as you'll usually have. So definitely like if you don't have it, you might want to consider not even running a shield or retribution build as it's that like integral to the build. Another super important part of the build is the, um, the blood letter com as it gives you I okay so I've only come across two so far and both of them had plus one on thin red line which is super great as that gets you up to 80% um, of your max HP <coughs> times all your stuff times all the bonuses which is super good um, and you don't have to worry about it because you'll be down to 20% health anyway and if you have the deathless relic that brings you <laughs> down to one HP but you'll also have an absurd amount of health. Um, now, I've I've gotten two versions, as I said before. One had uh, plus four on Phalanx Doctrine, and another one had plus two on Phalanx Doctrine, plus two on Desperate Measures. Now, I think I've seen some online that have plus three on Desperate Measures, but um, in regards to which skills you want, if there's a lot of enemies, like high enemy density, like the slot shafts and whatnot, you're going to want more Phalanx Doctrine, as... I think the breaking point is like around 10 or so stacks. The Phalanx Doctrine bonuses will be greater than the Desperate Measure bonuses. But if you're under like 10 stacks or whatever, um, having plus three or plus two or some amount of Desperate Measures is always better because you can start with the flat base 100% damage. Um, but of course, Desperate Measures does not give you shield um, while Phalanx Doctrine does. But of course, the blood letter com gives you healing your shield heals when you're supposed to heal health instead, which is probably the most important part of the blood letter com. As usually, I'd run something that boosts means of destruction instead, but just the healing is super important. And you can get five out of five on both Vampire and Phalanx Doctrine. Um, 
which means that all your grenades will heal all your shields and getting a kill will also increase your max shields. So basically Bloodletter Calm and Deathless Relic are super important for the build. Um, now things to watch out for. So if you run across a projected shield, like one of those shields that uh, spreads out in front of you when you crouch, that actually puts your shield out there too. So you will die immediately if you're hit by anything. Um, so if if like Katagawa farts like a thousand miles away and you're crouched, you will die. Um, so if you if you like to slide around, projected shields are not good because every time I would slide, I would just get I would get gimped by like <laughs> a bandit across the way, and I would just instantly die. Um, now also I have come across some bugs where I could be hit through my shield and that leads to a lot of problems as even level 1 skags can take you out. Um, so watch out for those two things. If you do come across the bug, just save and quit and it will reset it and all will be good. If you come across a projected shield, just chuck it because it's garbage or just disable your crouch button. Um, so if you've learned anything new, um, please leave a like or subscribe. So thank you very much for watching.